Hello married lovers. How are you all? Hope everyone is fine. We are continuously working for you and if you think we deserve a subscription, do subscribe our efforts by hitting that subscribe button. We promise to bring quality content to you. You might be feeling monotonous watching too much of anatomy lectures. So today's topic is from the subject biochemistry, which is one of the interesting subject on the IBMS. So let's get started. Presenting our first lecture on PCR under biochemistry. We brought you this topic because it has been asked even in competitive exams and it's also a past question of TU MBBS exams. So it's important, right? And we want you to know it thoroughly. We'll be answering few questions like what is PCR? What is the process involved and the modifications of PCR? And what are the uses of PCR? PCR, also called as polymerase chain reaction. The word polymerase is made up of two further words, polymer and suffix "ase," which implies enzyme. So polymerase is an enzyme that makes polymer of any other material, which in this case is DNA. Now it is called as chain reaction because the reaction steps are repeated again and again and again. So basically, PCR is a technique that is used to make many copies of DNA fragments. In simple sense, it's like a photocopy machine. You feed the data and it produces multiple identical copies. We will deal about it in details, but let me talk about the inventor first. Gary Mullis is the smart mind behind the invention of PCR technique. He invented this technique in 1989 and almost four years later, he was awarded with one of the most prestigious prizes in the world. Yes, you guessed it right, the Nobel Prize. Now what are the materials you need to perform a PCR? First of all, you'll need a machine, right? And it is the thermal cycler, also known as the PCR machine. In the machine, we have test tubes like equipment called as PCR tubes. The reaction actually takes place in these tubes since all the reagents are placed in them. And basically, thermal cycler is just some machine that can repeat the temperature and eventually the number of reaction cycles according to our will, as the name cycler itself suggests, right? So in this way, one can achieve the number of times the genes are to be amplified. Now what are the ingredients of PCR? First of all, you'll need a sample containing genetic material, that is DNA in case of PCR. We are going to extract the genetic material by the process of electrophoresis. Don't bother about the process of electrophoresis. We are going to discuss about it in coming days. So basically, the first thing we'll be needing is a DNA template or a DNA sample, let's say. After the collection of sample, we now will be needing a buffer system so that our enzymes work properly. Buffer is a solution that resists any change in pH by the addition of any acids or bases. You know this concept, right? So in this case, the action of buffer will be contributed by magnesium chloride and potassium chloride and the pH is maintained at 8.3. Remember magnesium, it's a very important element in this process. For building anything, you'll be needing builders or workers, right? So in this case, our builder is the polymerase enzyme. Imagine that you are building a house. Now you already have a builder or a worker that is polymerase enzyme. So what's the thing you'll be needing next? Right, those are the building blocks. So in this case, the building blocks are the nucleotides. The next thing we'll be needing is a primer. Primer, as the name itself suggests, they provide a prime base or acts as a basic starting material. So in this case, the primer helps the polymerase enzyme to bind with the DNA template. And oh yes, I forgot to tell you, the polymerase we'll be needing in this reaction is called as stack polymerase. Just remember the name now, I'll be talking about this in further part of the video in details. Now after all these ingredients are mixed, we alter the temperature and wait for the reaction steps to occur. Now let me make it easier for you guys to understand by showing an image. 
This image shows all the ingredients that are required in a PCR process. The material labeled as 1 shows the tag polymerase, the enzyme that actually performs the reaction. In number 2, there are DNA nucleotide bases or DNTPs. These are the DNA bases A, C, G and T. You might have known by now what A, C, G and T signify. And yes, they are the building blocks of DNA. The polymerase enzyme uses these nucleotide bases to construct new copies of DNA. Labeled as 3, within the cone-like structure, you can see there's a liquid material. Yes, that's the buffer. It functions to ensure the right conditions for the reaction. Finally, as a part of each experiment, you're gonna prepare a specific DNA template. These ingredients need to be mixed in precise proportions for which you'll be needing a micropipette. Micropipette is basically a smaller pipette but the calibrations are minute. That is, it's able to measure even microliter of a solution. The polymerase chain reaction progresses in an exponential manner. Or in simple words, assume that the first reaction produces two molecules, the second reaction will make four, third will make 16 copies and then 32, 64, 128 and so on. Hence, the gist of the story that occurs in this process is that just a few hundred reactions can produce billions of copies of DNA. It is also called gene amplification. Now you might have heard the term amplifier. What does an amplifier do? Yes, it makes the weak signal stronger. Here, the number of genes that is processed is amplified. Simply speaking, the genes are multiplied and in the power of two. Basically, the PCR process involves three steps. Those are separation or denaturation, priming or annealing, and the last one, that is extension. All these steps occur at different, different temperature, so PCR is also called as temperature dependent process. Don't worry, we'll explain these steps individually in a while, in a brief manner, but for now, I want you guys to imagine three reactions, each occurring at different temperature. Now you mix all the reagents and just change the temperature of solution and eventually it will lead to activation of one reaction at a time. Now you change the temperature in a sequential manner and the environment is a temperature controlled environment. So you can easily get the sequence of the reaction and just by changing the temperature we can make this cycle continue as much as time as we want. Now let's talk about the steps individually. Step first is separation, which means denaturation. Don't think of it as a complicated process. You just separate the two strands of DNA helix into single, single strands. And we do this by breaking the hydrogen bonds in between the strands. Now the step of separation is accomplished by maintaining the temperature at 95 degrees Celsius. I don't want you guys to remember the temperature, but just focus on the process for now. Step 2 is priming or annealing. You might have come across the term annealing previously too. Annealing is the process in which you heat something, basically a metal, and then you allow to cool it slowly. Now from our step 1 that is denaturation, we have maintained a temperature of 95 degrees Celsius and now in this step, we lower the temperature to 55 degrees Celsius such that the primers go and bind to the target area on the DNA template and this happens by the process of complementary base pairing. Now what is the significance of cooling? When cooled, the hydrogen bonds get re-established and the primers are joined with the individual strand. So this makes a site for the action of special enzyme called as polymerase. In our third step that is extension, we'll be using a special polymerase I had already mentioned called as TAC polymerase. Now you might be wondering why we simply didn't use human polymerase. We need something that can work at high temperature and human polymerase is not able to do so. 
This happens because our enzymes get inactivated at a high temperature. So we'll need thermophiles, which are the organisms that can tolerate high temperature. Thermus aquaticus is a bacteria that lives in hot springs and possesses heat-stable DNA polymerase that is most active around 70 degrees Celsius. Now why do we need heat-stable polymerases? It's because the reactions that occur in this process require high temperature. So the TAQ polymerase or the TAC polymerase will bind to our primer and also in the solution we'll have all the four type of nucleotides which I have told to be A, T, G, C and it will help to build the DNA in the solution. Step 4 involves the repetition of the process. Now as we are already told, we'll change the temperature of the substrate and the reaction will occur in a sequential manner. Each cycle will double the number of DNA present in the previous cycle since it is an exponential reaction, just in the way that a bacterium divides. Now when you look at the picture, at the topmost part you can appreciate that the denaturation process or the strand separation process has been occurring. This leads to the separation of the DNA helix into single single individual strands. Below that you can appreciate there is a primer binding or an annealing process. Now when you look at the picture carefully that represents a single PCR reaction. You can appreciate that there are two red colored comb like structure which are the primers. Now why two? This question might arise in your mind. It is because we have already separated the DNA helix into two separate strands and hence a primer isolates a single target region of the DNA strand to be copied. At the end part of the figure, you can see the last process called as extension, which occurs from 5' prime to 3' prime end. So it's basically a simple process, right? Now this is the same diagram representing the three steps. As explained initially, you can see the changes at the molecular level involving changes in DNA. Now why is PCR so hyped up? It's because PCR is a fantastic process that has hundreds of applications. The most common function you might have heard during COVID is that it helps in the diagnosis of the bacterial and viral diseases. There is this thing called gene expert and it is used to detect the TB bacterium. PCR is an amazing discovery since it can help us to detect even one bacterium in the specimen. It also aids in detecting viral infections like hepatitis C, HIV, and most importantly, coronavirus. Medical legal cases. This fancy term is used in the forensic science. It helps to increase the DNA from samples like hair follicles, saliva, blood, nails, where the amount of DNA is very scarce for further analysis. DNA fingerprinting is done for the detection of the culprit. It is also helpful in detecting the animal, for example if poachers hunt an animal which is illegal, even from the meat or blood remains, they can say which animal it is. Similarly, certain genetic disorders which are inherited like sickle cell anemia, beta thalassemia and cystic fibrosis, their genes can be detected. PCR also aids in prenatal diagnosis. There is this procedure called as amniocentesis in which if the cells extracted are less, by the process of PCR we can increase the DNA amount and this will help in making the test even more sensitive. PCR can also help us in detecting some cancers which is caused by mutation in the gene. Some are RB genes, TP53 genes. Don't focus on those genes right now because you are going to come across a lot of them in pathology. Just keep in mind it can help in detection of mutated genes in the cancerous cell's DNA. Now apart from PCR, you might have heard names such as RT-PCR, real-time PCR and multiplex PCR. RT-PCR originally refers to reverse transcriptase PCR which is different from the real-time PCR. 
but in co-wear as both of them are used simultaneously so we might use the same word for them but i already told you that they are different now let's talk briefly about the reverse transcriptase pcr now i want you guys to consider an example of a virus whose genetic material is rna let's say corona virus as it is very famous now now we all know transcription is the process of formation of mrna from dna so the process of formation of dna from rna is called as reverse transcription so in reverse transcriptase pcr we use an enzyme that converts rna into dna and by the process of pcr millions of copies of this viral dna can be made in this way we have a large amount of viral dna which helps in accurate diagnosis for example coronavirus detection hiv detection and other rna virus detection and yes luckily we have an enzyme called as tth that is derived from another thermophilus bacteria named as thermus thermophilus this enzyme has both dna polymerase and reverse transcriptase activity at high temperature hence using this idea of reverse transcription with a technique of pcr combinedly is called as rt pcr so how is reverse transcriptase pcr different from actual pcr in pcr or classical pcr only dna can be detected similarly in real time pcr the machine has an extra ability to quantify the products in each cycle it means it counts the number of dna copies the same time during the reaction and not the later analysis now since both the gene amplification and quantitative analysis occurs in real time so it's better called as real time pcr the real time pcr is used when you not only want to detect a virus but want to assess the viral load due to its real time quantifying ability multiplex pcr is used in a condition when you need to amplify multiple genes at a time this comes in handy and it targets multiple genes at a time now shall we evaluate ourselves with some questions so what's pcr pcr is a temperature dependent DNA amplification technique in which the cycle of temperature keeps on repeating according to the steps involved. We use 95 degrees Celsius for separation, 55 degrees Celsius for annealing, and 70 degrees Celsius for extension. So the cycle repeats as 95, 55, 72. Again, 95, 55, 72. What are the steps involved in PCR? The steps involved in PCR are separation or denaturation, primer binding process or annealing, and the last one, extension. Which ion is present in buffer solution? As I have already told you that will require a buffer solution after collection of the sample. So what ions possibly contribute to the buff- buffering action? You're right, it's magnesium. Magnesium acts as coenzyme for the DNA polymerase enzyme. What are the functions of PCR? PCR is an amazing technique with thousands of uses. The uses are in diagnosis and prognosis, in medical legal cases in forensic science, prenatal screening, in the detection of genetic disorders and in the detection of cancer. Thank you so much for staying till the end of the video. We'll soon be uploading new videos. We hope you learned something new. Have a nice time.